Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my new video where we are going to go over my top five tips that I think every single Jinx player needs to know. Now, my goal behind this video is to make you a better Jinx player and to give you a better understanding of the champion as a whole by the end of the video. Now, I put timestamps at the top of my page where you can skip an intro or you can skip a certain section or tip if you already have a good understanding of what I am trying to cover in that section. You can contact me directly and uh, through the pinned comments, I'm going to put a link to my Discord as well as you can hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when I go live and I stream here on YouTube. You can just ask me any questions there. Finally, I hope you guys add your own tips down below for Jinx because I am a bit limited with this format. I'm only going to do five tips. I don't want the video to run too long as well as I'm going to put a link to um, my uh, one of my Discord moderators uh, channels because she plays a shit ton of Jinx. She has like 100 hours at least played of Jinx and if you want to check out that gameplay i heavily encourage you guys to do so all right with all that out of the way guys let's get right into the first tip all right and getting into tip number one i want to cover a little bit about where jinx can thrive and where jinx might struggle a bit in different types of matchups first of all i want to cover the number one and number two champions that jinx does exceedingly well into as these are really high win rates for the amount of games played and the pool of games total so with Kaisa, she has a 54% win rate into Kaisa because of her superior range, and they are both looking to do similar things of scaling up, so Jinx isn't really pressured too heavily in the laning phase, depending on the supports. They, those can swing the matchups quite heavily. And then Zaya, another three item type of ADC that Jinx can really look to scale against, and another three item ADC in Caitlyn, and then um, Tristana. These are all really, um, these did not surprise me being the top four win rates for Jinx because they're all looking to scale quite heavily outside of Caitlyn trying to be a little bit of a lane bully on her BF sword back. Next up, I want to talk about the win rates that he she really struggles with. Now, champions that are looking to break up the monotony of the three item power ADC just looking to scale and farm and then team fight late are things like Misfortune that is a very strong all-in ADC right now with exceedingly strong team fights as well as champions that are looking to power spike on one items things like kogma and twitch can really bully jinx quite heavily in the laning phase if they are able to get access to their items quickly again syndra another champion that is looking to break up the three item monotony and Callista and ash all of these champions all of the top um, win rate champions against jinx are looking to beat her to the punch in where they are powerful and useful in team fights so please keep this in mind when you are picking up jinx you usually want to pick it up into a enemy lane that is looking to just scale as well as jinx will outscale most of the adcs and that will wrap up tip number one all right, and jumping into tip number two, there's one small thing I want to cover really quickly is where I see a lot of people still doing this and it's so freaking cringy when they do it. So you cannot flash your abilities when you are playing Jinx. You have to flash and then use the ability if you want to play it out that way. You cannot try and reposition it. It is always thrown by the original point of where you channeled it. I am going to show you guys what I mean by this is if I flash it maybe with something more traditional that a alt flash works with like a Cassiopeia, if I flashed over this and ultimated it in front of that, these targets wouldn't be hit. But when you try and flash your abilities with Jinx, it still hits the targets behind you. So this is not going to extend the range of your zap or your ultimate in our different reposition. So please, please, please keep this in mind. Second up, go to hotkeys, go to player movement and make sure that you have a player attack move quick button is this is going to be exceedingly important for all of ADCs, but it is going to be a little bit different with Jinx because she has two different speeds. You want to go into the practice tool and practice the two different types of orb walking because when you are shooting your rockets, it's going to be a lot slower than when you are shooting your um, your mini guns. So make sure that you have a decent understanding of the different orb walkings that you can look to do when you are um, playing Jinx. And that will wrap up tip number two. 
All right, and getting into tip number three, I want to talk about something that is exceedingly important when playing Jinx, and that is understanding your kit and the utility that you provide when you are playing Jinx. You do not have any type of mobilities like a dash like Illusion has. You have a slow and a root. Now, the most effective way, as Jinx is a bit of an older champion, people really know and understand her kit. They know the delay that comes out of the W and how the E's take a little bit of time to start um, before the proccing and the general range of the E. So how you want to look to play Jinx the most effectively is by working off your allied support. And this is a perfect metaphor. You have a lot of tanky engaged supports that are being played in solo queue. So how you want to look to do it is if someone procs a slow you want to work off that slow and then into your own abilities so you want to look at it if you ever played world of warcraft as a cc chain on the enemy target and just make sure that you're using your highest um accuracy type of cc first say um, something like thresh lands a hook and then he flays then you want at the end of the flay slow you want to throw out your w slow into the e chompers and that is going to be an exceedingly large amount of cc that is going to be thrown out on the enemy target now the last thing you want to be doing is just by th being just throwing out long range zaps at people because of the rather large mana costs and the rather easy way people can look to dodge the w the exceptions to this is when enemies are against the wall and they it is very hard for them to dodge to the right so you can lead them a little bit to the left and it is exceedingly hard for them to dodge them chasing people down this narrow core away down the um just kind of this line against the wall is a great way for jinx to get a bunch of kills because she is able to regularly hit her zap and it is exceedingly easy for her to hit her ultimate on targets that pass through this narrow corridor so you always want to look to throw abilities on people when you know that they are going to be in a spot that you you can hit and that will wrap up this tip all right and getting into tip number four i want to go over the importance of knowing what gun is the most important and what is going to be the most impactful in the current situation you are in if you are under low threat and you understand that you are going to win in this 1v1 situation or it's going to be a one on one duel the type of gun you want to be looking to use is the mini gun as it's going to be a extremely strong weapon that is going to give you a lot of bonus attack speed and is going to allow you to shred down the enemy particularly champions that are looking to crowd you something like a lucian dashing in on you is going to be pretty ineffective to just be shooting a rocket at someone that is pretty close to you so making sure that you are looking to use your mini gun in those situations in situations where you're able to control the space and you're able to slow the enemy and auto speed Space them this means that you are staying on the outside of your auto attack range and staying out of their auto attack range is an exceedingly effective way to play out the situation in general you just have to work off the different situations that come in front of jinx so always when you're getting crowded you want to look for the mini gun on the enemies if you are able to auto space them you want to look for the longer range rockets and looking to harass the enemy so these are the kind of the two different ways you want to look to play it out generally when you are playing out team fights or skirmishes you want to start with your rocket launcher because you are able to engage the enemy before you are able to with the minigun so always look to start off with at least one or two rockets before maybe an enemy looks to dash in and then you can switch over to your minigun to do a lot of um, attacks exceedingly quickly now there might be one exception to this where the rocket launcher can be a little bit more effective in the short range and that is when there are multiple targets that have just jumped right on top of you or maybe someone that is really close to you maybe uh, there's three enemies it's going to be a lot more effective to just be going over to your rocket launcher so you can hit several people with that 110 percent damage and that will wrap up this tip all right, and jumping into the final tip, I want to talk about something really quickly um, before we get into the team fighting section of this tip is that you can insert, um, you can input your actions while you are channeling. So for example, when you are using your W or R, there's a little bit of a cast time that is displayed by that bar that pops up. You are able to input a ability when that is going on. So I'm gonna give you guys an example. I'm gonna go W into R, I'm gonna press R while the W is loading and it goes very quickly. You do not have to wait for the end of the zap to start charging up your W. This is gonna be a quicker way to combo your two abilities. All right, and getting into the team fighting. This is where Jinx really thrives, is these late game team fights around 
objectives where people tend to bunch up quite a bit particularly when they are engaging or when they are all running away together i don't know for some reason people always like going down the same exact paths as their allies which can lead for a lot of chase down kills for jinx so how you want to look to play out team fights in general is by staying at your max range and fighting front to back as jinx is a late game carry she generally will win all the front to back team fights so you want to make sure that you are working front to back and this means you're attacking the people that are closest to you and then working towards the people that are the furthest away and how this really is going to be quite effective on jinx is after you get a certain kill on an enemy you are going to get excited and you are able to chase them down quite quickly so we're going to get excited from that with the new um, patch changes and then you are able to chase down the people further in the back so making sure that you are really attacking the champions that the allies are attacking as well can be quite beneficial because you are going to get that quicker proc of getting excited um say you have an assassin like a leblanc or a zed or someone like that and they maybe are trying to burst out one of the divers like a kazix in the front that is going to be a priority target for you because you are going to be able to get that quick excited so always work front to back and look for targets that are already being focused by your allies or say before in the team fight say in chat hey guys let's focus down this particular champion so i can snowball them down with my uh, get excited that's gonna wrap up my final tips guys if you have any questions for me you can hit me up in the comments down below and as always take it easy